So I wanted to pop on and chat a little bit about the three main like pillars, I'll call them, of backpacking, right? So what can we do to actually become a badass backpacker, a full on, you know, make that switch from day hiker to backpacker, or, um, you know, maybe you've hardly ever even been hiking before and you have this dream of going backpacking or on longer backpacking trips. That is totally possible, but you do need to um, build up all of these things and have them work together to be able to have a successful trip, a safe trip. Okay, especially now, you know, we're, we're getting well into the summer here. It's July already. And uh, I've been seeing so many stories in the news, you know, and of course, obviously the media loves to, you know, hype up any, any sort of drama or incidents on the trail. So, you know, know that those always may be a little bit exaggerated, but most stories that I see of these hikers who are, you know, going missing or getting lost or having these like incidents on the trail and they're not being able to take care of themselves out there. And I believe that it stems from, um, you know, one of these things is missing like for them, right? They're, they're not implementing all three of these things. And then, you know, there are issues on the trail that can get them into trouble. So um, what I would consider the three pillars of backpacking are having the right gear, right? And then also having the right skills and then the third pillar is mastering your own fears. Okay, and like I said, all of these things are going to work together to give you a more successful trip. So notice I said having the right gear, right? So that doesn't mean the best or the most expensive or even the lightest. Um, just having the right gear to be able to take care of yourself out there, okay? So your, your big three, your shelter, your sleeping bag, um, and, you know, your tent and a good pack, right? So if just having those things already is going to set you up for a better trip than, say, those who get lost and end up being stuck out in the woods without a shelter or those sorts of things. And then, of course, too, on top of that, you want your 10 essentials, right? So all of your food and your water and all of your first aid supplies and anything else you're going to need to take care of yourself out in the woods to help prevent these search and rescue attempts, help prevent other people from having to, uh, you know, kind of save you out on the trail. That's my goal for you there. So make sure you have all the right gear you need. And then you can't just have the gear and just go for it. Just go out on the trail and, and think you're going to be okay. You also know how to, you have to know how to use it. You have to have these, the right skills also to be able to take care of yourself. So a big one that I'm a huge promoter of first aid training, like go take a wilderness first aid class or a wilderness first responder class um, so that you can learn to prevent issues, you know, you can recognize hypothermia before it happens, like while you're just at risk rather than, you know, when you're going to need to be rescued. You can r recognize when you're at risk for, you know, heat exhaustion or heat stroke, like if you're kind of heading in that direction. And you can stop these things, nip them in the bud before they get to be an actual problem. So definitely, you know, learn the skills, go um, get some first aid training. And also just learn how to protect yourself against animals, learn how to hang a bear bag, um, learn how to prevent these kind of like wildlife interactions that, that may lead to an incident as well. And then um, also just learning how to um, learn your own body, learn your own limits. Don't push yourself too far, um, at least too far in the beginning, right? So recognize when you've hiked enough and need to rest for the day. Recognize when you um, need food or recognize when you're about to become dehydrated, you know, again, before these things become a problem. So having those skills will definitely set you up for more success. And then the last pillar I wanted to touch on today is mastering your own fears. So I also don't like it that, so, you know, I've seen a lot of hikers going out there trying to go backpacking or maybe even day hiking and, you know, they're totally unprepared. Either they, they don't have the right gear or they don't have the skills to take care of themselves. But then on the opposite end of that, I see these hikers who are kind of stuck inside. They're, they're just the, the armchair hikers, right? They just research, research, research and read and read all these trail journals. And, you know, they're gathering all this knowledge and information and making all these lists and these bucket lists, but they're never actually going on the trips that they want to go on, right? So um, that's not where we want to be either. And I do think a lot of that stems from fear, right? So hesitation or maybe lack of knowledge. Maybe they don't actually know how to, um, you know, plan their first trip or get out there. But I do think that we tend to put these things off because we're afraid, right? We may be afraid of solo hiking. Um, it's actually, it's almost silly to say, but I think for a lot of us too, we're afraid of the dark, essentially. You know, we're afraid of going out and staying overnight in the woods in the dark by ourselves, um, which can be scary. But so we need to learn how to um, master these fears and know that they 
never, they'll never go away completely, but we can help manage them so that we can still go on these awesome hikes and on our bucket list trips and not have that fear hold us back. So uh, a few tips for you here are I am also a big supporter of packing your fears. And I know you'll see uh, mixed messages about this online, but especially in the beginning, as, well, as long as, you know, within reason, I don't want you to pack like 60 pounds worth of your fears. But for example, like if you're scared of running out of food, pack some extra food. Or like if you're scared of, you know, being too cold at night or freezing at night, pack some extra clothes, you know, pack some extra warm layers. And, or, you know, if you're afraid of being attacked or, um, you know, of bears or something, pack bear mace or like pack a good knife, um, pack runner's mace, you know, pack something, anything that will convince your brain that you're safe out there. Okay. So pack your fears until you are comfortable and you know, hey, if this happens, I have something to take care of myself. I have something to take care of that. Okay, so number one is pack your fears. Number two is to start easy. Okay, so um, if you're a new hiker or if you're new to backpacking, start closer to home. Um, start on trails that are closer to home, maybe within cell phone service. If you can scout them out ahead of time and see if they have cell phone service, that's a huge help. Just having that relief of, you know, you could call or text a friend or, you know, if you needed to or if you were freaking out in the night. Um, and then also, um, if you're, if you're just starting out, go with a buddy, find a hiking buddy. If you don't know someone already, you can definitely find people to hike with in, um, Facebook groups. There are a lot of either like a local Facebook group you could ask questions in, or even I'm in some, uh, more national Facebook groups, even that people will ask like, Hey, is anyone in this area, you know, want to go with me? You could do that. Or like forums, if there's a forum for the trail, especially long trails that you want to go on, uh, you can find a hiking buddy there. So go with a hiking buddy and uh, extra bonus tip here. If you're working on um, moving towards being able to solo hike, even if you're going with a buddy, practice like the feeling of solo hiking. So agree to hike a certain distance apart or a certain time apart and, you know, maybe set up intervals where you'll meet up throughout the day or maybe you can meet up at a certain camping spot, but then set your tents up pretty far apart, okay, like where you can't see each other or just out of sight or maybe just out of earshot so you know someone else is out there with you, but they're not right there with you, okay, so you can practice that feeling of being alone and just see what that's like to actually be out there by yourself uh, without the danger of really being out there alone. So in that spirit of practicing being alone and practicing solo hiking, make sure that you bring something to keep your mind busy, to keep your mind entertained. So whether that's you load up your phone with downloaded podcasts or maybe an audiobook or maybe music, uh, anything you can listen to in headphones or uh, maybe just books to read or maybe a small book of puzzles or, you know, something to entertain your brain and keep your mind off of what may or may not be going on around you. So even I, just this past week, I went backpacking and I got spooked. Like, I was terrified. I was violently awoken in the middle of the night by really loud noises, like crashing trees, like trees breaking down, like something big was moving around. And I don't know if it was a bear or a moose. I would assume one of those two things, because like I said, this was not just like leaves rustling. This was like things were crashing down, like kind of near my campsite. And so I jump out of my sleeping bag, you know, I jump out of my tent, I, I have a, a black diamond spot, I turn my spotlight on, you know, as bright and as far as it could go, I'm like looking around, and I didn't see anything, luckily, but, and, but I was really spooked then, right, you know, my heart's racing a little bit, and, you know, had some adrenaline going, so I was really freaked out, freaked out about going back to sleep, so I just laid in my tent, and I was reading, I was just reading a book, and I, and I told myself I would read for an hour, and just listen for an hour, and see if I, I heard anything else, or, you know, if I thought something was moving in closer to my campsite, you know, I just kind of test it out, and see what was going on. So I read, I was reading, reading, reading for about an, I don't even think I made it to an hour, it was like 45 minutes, and I was just getting so tired, and I didn't hear anything else, so um, I just went back to sleep, and it was fine, but I could imagine, though, if I didn't have a book, or if I didn't have something to keep my mind entertained during that time, I would have just been awake, thinking about all the possibilities of, like, what that could have been, or, you know, the bad things that could have happened, 
and that really doesn't help. It definitely does not help when you're out there on the trail. So that's um, what I would suggest you do. Or if you do get freaked out or if you're in a scary situation on the trail, give yourself a time limit to just, you know, hey, I'm only going to think about this for an hour or, you know, I'm only going to think like, you know, maybe I'm only going to keep track of the storm for, you know, 10 or 20 minutes. And then, you know, if it's moving away, then I can just put it on my mind and not be not be afraid of it anymore. So those are my just some quick tips for managing fear on the trail. And just keep in mind that your fear will never totally go away. And even as you hike more, your fears might change over time. So, um, you know, depending on your experiences out there. So like I this past year for the first time, I was attacked by um, an aggressive dog off leash. And I was never afraid of dogs in the past. But now I'm I'm very, very cautious and I'm pretty afraid of dogs when I see them on the trail. So, you know, that can develop. Or maybe if it's just something new, you know, if you're hiking in a new climate or maybe you're hiking like the furthest you've ever been away from home or in another country, like those things can be scary. But like I said, so if you prepare, though, if you know your skills, if you have all the right gear to keep yourself safe out there, then you can definitely go for it. And then it's just a mental game from there of managing your fear while you're out there. So um, if you need any extra help or any extra support around these things, um, like, you know, the skills, what gear to need, um, or if you don't know, like if you don't know how to use a map and compass or if you don't know how to hang a bear bag, then uh, my backpacking essentials course, my self-study course is actually on sale this week for about half off. It's part of the Smart Travel Super Bundle. So it's actually my course is in there. There are 29 other courses and ebooks and everything about traveling, traveling alone, how to travel long term, other camping resources or like RVing resources if you're an RVer. Um, if any of those things interest you at all, you can get that bundle this week only. It's on sale for $47. Usually my course by itself is $97, but like I said, that's in there. Um, it's part of the bundle for that $47 for this week only until Friday. I will leave the link in the comments and in the description of this video. If you have any questions about that at all, you can let me know. And until next time, happy hiking!